Welcome to Open Your Reality. Big thanks to everyone who commented on the last video about the big cheese. I also appreciate everyone who is still supporting the channel. Thank you. Now on to business. In this video, I want to talk about how our simulated universe is rendered, but more from a scientific viewpoint. Most of my viewers already know that I believe our universe is a virtual reality simulation in line with Tom Campbell's MBT theory. While the photo of our universe as a simulation is not new, just 10 years ago, many scientists were not on board with it. Currently, at least 50% of scientists now believe we are probably living in a simulation. But 70 years ago or so, some of the cutting edge physicists already knew that reality is likely a hologram or an illusion. Even Einstein himself called reality an illusion. And world-class scientists like David Bohm and Carl Prebrom were calling it a hologram, saying the universe has many of the qualities of one. This was talked about in one of my favorite classic books, The Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot. Fast forward several decades later, and guys like Nick Bostrom, Donald Hoffman, and Tom Campbell are explicitly saying we live in a simulated universe. So with all that said, I thought I would make a video kind of explaining how our universe is rendered. I've never made such a video and it could be very expansive, but as usual, yours truly tried to make it as streamlined as possible so you can get the gist without having to sit through an hour long video. So here it goes. And by the way, before I continue, if you like my content, please subscribe and give the video a like. Thanks. All right, the first thing to understand is that we live in what Tom Campbell calls a PMR, or physical matter reality. Now, that doesn't mean our reality is actually physical, only that it gives the appearance of being so due to its tight rule set. The second thing to understand is that our entire universe, or PMR to make it simple, does not exist unless there are sentient beings to experience it. I know that's a hard belief to accept, but it's true. Let me give you a video game analogy. Some of you may be familiar with the game No Man's Sky that debuted in 2016. It's a multiplayer action-adventure survival game that has been gaining popularity. What makes this game so unique and special is that the programmers, of which there were only four initially working on laptops, unbelievable, created the game to resemble our universe in complexity, detail, and size. In fact, there are so many planets in the No Man's Skies universe, it would take one player 585 billion years to visit all of them, even if he or she remained on each one for just a single second. That is absolutely incredibly mind-boggling, and people all over the world can log in and play. Now, just imagine the sheer scope of complexity of having so many planets, suns, moons, players, etc. in this game. It's akin to the complexity in our own universe. And where is all that information stored? Well, it's in the computer that computes it, just like our own universe. Now, what would happen if just for a single day, nobody logged in to play No Man's Sky? Does its universe disappear? Where does it go? The answer is no PMR fundamentally exists unless there are sentient beings to experience it. So if all the beings in our universe were extinguished or no longer ceased to exist, our universe wouldn't either. It would just simply disappear. You see, all PMRs are truly in the minds of its inhabitants. Sounds crazy, but it's a fundamental rule of all virtual realities. Now, the beauty of No Man's Sky is that it is programmed much the same way as our reality is programmed. It's called procedural programming, and everything is computed on the fly. Nothing that's rendered is saved in memory. The computer that generates No Man's Sky and our universe will create the reality only when it's viewed by a sentient being. Until that time, nothing is rendered, and I mean nothing. And this is another concept that boggles the mind. 
But since the computer that is simulating our reality, which Tom calls the LCS, or Larger Consciousness System, is a finite system, our reality is also finite and requires a large degree of efficiency to work. You see, logically, nothing needs to ever be rendered within our simulation until a sentient being looks at it. And even so, that being only sees as much as is required. For example, the level of detail in an object we see depends on the viewer as well. An explorer who sees trees in the distance only sees a vague form of them. The details of the trees need not be rendered unless the explorer gets very close to the trees. A virtual reality is just an information system. It's only data in a computer. Are you understanding this? To again give a video game example, the world around you in No Man's Sky is generated by your gaming system at the point you visit it. Leave and it's all thrown away. But if you return, it's generated again exactly as it was. This also means the game will be completely playable offline. Now, the third major point or rule of our simulation has to do with time and velocity. Our particular PMR in terms of time functions one delta t at a time, which is 10 to the minus 44 seconds. This is a very fast processing speed and makes our reality feel fluid and real. In theory, nothing can happen slower than the speed. And in terms of velocity, the speed of light is the actual speed limit of the universe, which explains why no matter what speed you move at, if you shine a light, even when moving close to light speed, it will only ever move as fast as the speed of light which is about 186,000 miles per second. These parameters of time and velocity are inherently built into the rule set of our simulated universe. Now, the fourth major idea to understand is that all reality is based on a probability scale. This is a little more difficult to explain and understand than the other points. Generally, anything is possible in our universe, but it works off probabilities. For example, if our same explorer comes upon new territory that has never been discovered, the LCS, the computer simulating our reality, may have to choose between 10 different possibilities for what that explorer sees. Such uncertainty can create a large range of possibility or probabilities. In this case, the LCS has 10 possibilities. It will then plug them into a probability distribution and the computer will draw randomly from them based on the probability. Whatever it determines is then rendered, and the explorer will see that. Now, this coincides with another major point of how our simulation is rendered, and that is once a particular object, territory, or space is seen, it now becomes defined by the computer and applied to the virtual reality. In this way, all the players of the game, meaning us, will see the same set of things when we look at them. So in this example, if our explorer comes upon a small forest and is the first person to ever view it, all other explorers will likely see it in the same way. This is because the data the LCS generates has to be consistent with the past. Now, there are fuzzy moments where the data is not really that solidified and can change. For example, suppose you took off your ring and placed it somewhere in your house. Maybe you put it in your kitchen somewhere and wasn't thinking very clearly about it at the time because you were distracted. Then you go on vacation for two weeks and return home to look for your ring. Because you weren't clear about where you placed it and nobody else but you saw it since that time, there's a small probability it is not in the same place you left it. Now, I don't want to get too into this, but this could explain why items mysteriously disappear or end up in different spots than you thought they were. I bet this has happened to you at least once or twice in your life. All right, we're making good progress so far. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information, so I'll just hit you with one or two more major points. The next one is that we live in a fractal world that builds upon itself. Complexity occurs from utter simplicity. It's called emergent complexity, and I believe No Man's Sky is formulated in the same way. Basically, the LCS devised a stable rule set for our universe using basic shapes and math, and over time developed into a complex reality that eventually became self-aware. 
Also, it's important to mention that the computer that generates our reality is not in the same reality as the simulation itself. It is in another reality that can only be classified as other because we are not aware of it, nor can we explore it. All this talk of hacking the simulation, like Elon Musk and others have posited, has no merit because a virtual character can't break out into the computer that generates it any more than, say, Super Mario can break out of his game and into your living room. Now, there are other PMRs and non-physical matter realities that we can hack into, but they are all simulated as well. That's something that I think most people don't understand. And I'm afraid that we'll probably never experience the place called Other, where the computer or LCS resides. And in that sense, we're all trapped, so to speak, in this vast illusion of PMRs and non-physical matter realities. And there's nothing we can really do about it, lest we choose to have our consciousness dissolved or transmuted. And if you're curious to know more all about that, I made a video a couple of months ago called What Happens to Damaged Souls in the Spirit World that you may be interested in watching. You can see it right here. The last major point I'll mention is how we interface with the simulation. Now, the important thing to understand here is that we are not the simulation. We are consciousness. We are the player of the avatar, which is our body in the simulation. This is another point that really confuses people. So let me put it to you like this. Your body, your brain, and everything that's physical is part of the simulation. However, your mind, your memories, your consciousness is not part of the simulation. It is the only fundamental or real thing in all existence, and it generally resides outside of this virtual reality. However, we feel as though we are right here, right now, in this body. Why? Because we are logged into this particular data stream and connected to the body. However, when we dream, we are no longer getting the same data stream and experience another reality. And when we meditate, if we can do it well enough, we experience the same thing. Except we may not even experience our body at all. And for those people who experienced an NDE or near-death experience, they may experience yet another data stream and without their body as well. I hope this is all not too confusing for you. Basically, the more you study this stuff and listen to Tom's videos and mine, I guess, as well, the more you'll come to understand it. I'll admit it took a while for me to comprehend as well. Now, at this point, you may be wondering how the system created so many of us. I'm not talking about so-called physical bodies because creating things inside the simulation is easy for the LCS to do. If it can create one, it can create billions. But our consciousness is all individualized and separate from each other on a certain level. How did the LCS manage to do that? Because as I said before, our consciousness is the only thing that's real. Well, I'm afraid it's as easy as copy and paste for the LCS. It's a pretty neat trick, I must admit. Tom describes it like this. The LCS knew that it would benefit if it split its consciousness into millions, billions, or even trillions of smaller, separate parts. In this way, they could all interact with each other, creating a super large number of possible experiences. To do that effectively, it had to give each one free will to do what they want, which you've heard me say a million times before on this channel. Now, how did the LCS make each one unique? Because just like snowflakes, each one of us is unique and no two conscious beings are the same, not even animals. For people, the LCS created archetypes. I'm not sure how many of them truly exist, perhaps 16 or 32 or maybe even more, but everyone is one or a combination of these archetypes imbued with unique characteristics. If you want me to get more in-depth on archetypes in a separate video, let me know. I kind of had the idea of doing a video on archetypes and the hero's journey combined. Now, some of you may be familiar with the hero's journey. This is the idea we all go through a set of experiences throughout our life in an individual and collective sense that leads us to an eventual resurrection and rebirth. I'll conclude with this and just ask that if you have any questions about the material in this video, drop them in the comments below. 
I know I haven't responded to the Big Cheese comments yet, but I plan to take a few hours and go through all the recent comments from the last week, and I'll be sure to look and respond to as many questions as I can. Thank you to everyone who watched this video until the end and has been a faithful viewer and supporter of my work. If you wish to donate, the links are below. All right, that brings a conclusion to this video. I'll see everyone in the comment section or the next video coming out in a few days. Namaste.